A very happy morning to you all children. I welcome you all for today's learning session. Children, we are going to start a fresh and new lesson today. And the name of the lesson is Light. This is a very important chapter and it comes under the topic physics. In this lesson, we are going to learn the basic concepts of light. What are the properties of light? Then what is an image? What are the types of image? What is the quality of image formed in a plane mirror? Then reflection, difference between regular and diffused reflection. Then all the other concepts will be dealt in this lesson. What we are going to see in class 8 is the basic and when you go to class 10 you will study much in detail to this. Okay children, therefore we will start the lesson. Come let us go into the lesson please. First let us start with the nature of light. What do you mean by nature of light? Nature of light deals with all the properties of light we have studied. First one, light is a form of electromagnetic radiation which do not require any medium for propagation. So what is this electromagnetic radiation? You will learn when you are, go to class 10. Then second one, light exists in dual nature, both as particle nature as well as wave nature. Modern quantum theory of light states, light is neither a wave nor a particle. Light travels at a speed of nearly 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second in air or vacuum. Light travels along a straight line and this property is called rectilinear propagation of light. The straight line is called a ray and the bundle of rays is called a beam of light. So these are the various properties of light which you have come across in your lower classes. Now let us see what makes things visible. We can see the world through our eyes or our sense of sight. However, we cannot see anything without light that is in darkness. When light falls upon or is emitted by an object, our eyes detect the light and hence the object becomes visible to us. So in short, light enables us to see things and in the absence of light, we will not see anything. On the basis of light, the objects around us can be classified into two. They are luminous objects and non-luminous objects. So what are they? Luminous object, an object which produces visible light are called luminous objects. For example, candle, sun, flashlight, neon lights, all emit their own light. Therefore, they are known as luminous objects. On the other hand, an object which does not produce visible light, that means it reflects or allows light to pass through, allows us to see the object, they are known as non-luminous objects. Example, moon, stained glass windows, colored liquids, textbook, pen, etc. They just reflect the light from the sources. Therefore, they are regarded as non-luminous objects. What happens when light falls on a plane surface or a mirror? We know that light is a form of energy which is responsible for the sense of sight 
in the human eyes. Light can be called as the radiation that is emitted, reflected or absorbed by different objects. A mirror is a glass having a shiny surface. When light falls on a mirror, it is reflected back. Hence, a mirror changes the direction of light that falls upon it. So, the change in the direction of the light when it falls on a mirror or any polished surface, it is called as reflection. Children, this slide refers to the diagram of a reflection. So you find here many lines and these lines are called as rays. Here in this picture, you can find incident ray, a line and it falls on the mirror and at the point of touching, it gets reflected and so you have the reflected ray and you have a dotted line which is called normal. A normal is a line which is drawn 90 degrees to the mirror. So there are three rays formed in the reflection of light. They are incident ray, reflected ray and normal. Now you see to the right side diagram. When they make the rays, they also make the angles. So we can have two angles, angle between incident ray and the normal and the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. So it's a very, very important process. So in the diagram of light, we have three rays incident ray, reflected ray and normal and we have two angles, angle of incidence and angle of reflection. Now let us see to the definitions of this one by one. The ray of light which strikes the surface is called incident ray. The incident ray which comes back after reflection is called reflected ray. The perpendicular line drawn at the point of incidence is called normal. The angle between the normal and the incident ray is called angle of incidence. We regard it by the letter I. The angle between the normal and the reflected ray is called angle of re reflection. We keep it by the letter R. So, when there is a regular reflection, the angle formed between these two, that is angle I and angle R, both of them will be equal. The angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. This slide gives you a clear information about the definition of all the rays and all the angles made during reflection. Incident ray is the ray of light that strikes the mirror is called incident ray. Normal, a line drawn perpendicular to the mirror, drawn at the point of incidence, where the incident ray strikes the mirror is called the normal. Then angle of incidence, the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called as angle of incidence. Reflected ray, the ray of light leaving the mirror surface is known as the reflected ray. Angle of reflection, the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is known as angle of reflection. Children, look at this slide. This is a very important slide which reveals about the laws of reflection. There are totally two laws governing this reflection. They are regarded as laws of reflection. First law of reflection and second law of reflection. The first law of reflection 
it deals with all the rays of light so there are totally three rays the incident ray the reflector ray and the normal so the first law tells that the incident ray the reflector ray and the normal all lie in the same plane what do you mean by plane here any rectangular surface is regarded as a plane supposing if you are sitting in a room you are bounded with four planes one is the floor the other one is the roof and the other four are the length and breadth of your room so the first class says all the three rays will be in one single plane and they cannot be in different planes so the first law of reflection states that the incident ray the reflector ray and the normal all lie in the same plane the second law tells us tells us about its angles so there are two angles formed here angle of incidence and angle of reflection so during a regular reflection these laws are equal i mean these two angles are equal the second law of reflection states that the angle of incidence i is equal to the angle of reflection children this slide gives you the different types of reflection the reflection can be of two types regular reflection and irregular or diffuse reflection so what is this now let us see what is regular reflection when parallel rays of light falls on a smooth surface the reflected rays are parallel this is called regular reflection regular reflection forms image of the object of the same quality now you see the ray diagram here all the incident rays are parallel and so the all the reflected rays are also parallel this will happen when the reflecting surface for example the glass here it is smooth so a smoother surface will reflect all the rays of light as the laws of reflection therefore you will get the image as bright as the object now you see to the next diagram all the incident rays are parallel but the reflected rays are not parallel this is due to the irregular reflecting surface though we see a reflecting surface smooth but when you examine it under a microscope it will have lot of ups and downs so those surfaces are irregular surfaces so the reflection caused in these irregular surfaces the reflected image will not be as clear as in the case of regular reflection therefore this type of reflection where the surface is not smooth and the image is not clear we call it as irregular reflection children now let us pass on to the different types of images so first of all what is an image when you stand in front of a mirror what you see inside the mirror is known as image so when you stand in front of the mirror the image of yourself is formed on the mirror so what are the properties of those image it can be classified into three types what is the type of image the type of image formed may be real image or virtual image what is a real image and what is a virtual image real images are 
the ones where you can capture it on a screen. For example, if you consider the wall of your house as a screen, sometimes you see the image of yourself on the wall depending upon the light. That means the image is formed on the screen. This type of image it is known as real image. Virtual image is exactly opposite to this. If the images are not obtained on the screen, they are known as virtual image. Now when you stand in front of the mirror, the image is formed only in the mirror. But whereas the image is not formed after the mirror. So even in the wall, therefore it is a virtual image. Next we can talk about the size of the image. If the size of the image, we are comparing it with the size of the object. If it is bigger in size, if the size of the image is bigger than the real object, then we say it is an enlarged image. Now, if the image is shorter than the image formed with the real image, then we call it as reduced image or diminished image. And sometimes the image will be of the same height. So if the images are of same height, we call it is the same size of the object. Therefore, the sizes can be enlarged, reduced or diminished or of the same size. Then let us talk about the attitude of the image. Attitude means the uh, position of the image, whether it is an erect image or diminished or whether it is inverted image. Now, when the object is straight and if the image is also straight, then we call the image as upright image. For example, if you show a pencil in front of the plane mirror, in such a way the sharp pointed end is up, then in the image also we can see the sharp pointed in the upward. So it is an upright image. Now if the image is formed on the other side, I mean in the opposite way, then it is known as inverted image. If in the pencil, the pointed is up and in the mirror, if you see it down, you cannot see it actually down, but if you perhaps to see it down, then the image is inverted image. Now, the last attitude of the image is laterally inverted. What is this laterally inverted? The left side of an object appears as right and the right side of an object appears as left. This property is called lateral inversion. You would have seen the ambulance and the word ambulance is written laterally inverted in vehicles. So we will discuss about this later. So this way of writing, for example, you write any letter and show it in the mirror and that will be laterally inverted image. So properties of images can be compared with type, size and attitude. Now let us discuss about the image formed by the plane mirror. So the plane mirror is the one where you are using it in your dressing room. Every day you stand in front of the mirror for makeup of yourself and that is what is called a plane mirror. If you look at the plane mirror you will have a polished surface on one end and the other 
side will be painted with red oxide and that's why the image is formed in the plane mirror when you view it. The first one, the image is erect. The image formed by the plane mirror is erect. Now look at this diagram here. A man is standing in front of the mirror and his image is seen on the mirror. Now the head is up. In the image also the head is up. Therefore it is an erect image. Second one, the image is same size as the object. So measure the height of the man. Measure the height of the image. Both the heights are equal. Therefore, the image is same size as that of the object. Third one, the image is at the same distance from the mirror as the object is in front of it. Now, between the man and the image of the man, there lies the mirror. And the mirror is exactly at the center. That means the distance between the man and the mirror is equal to the distance between the image and the mirror. So the image is at the same distance from the mirror as the object is in front of it. Fourth one, the image is virtual. So we have discussed about the virtual image in the last slide. It cannot be obtained on the screen. So when you are uh, keeping a plane mirror and you are in front of the plane mirror, you can see your image only on the mirror, not on the wall, which is behind the mirror. Therefore, the image formed by the plane mirror is virtual. Then the last point, the image is laterally inverted. So laterally inverted, we are also discussed in the case of ambulance. Now see the letter, the word brown and observe how the letters are when you show it in the mirror. So the left side of the, the, left side of the object appears as right and the right side appears as left. And this property is known as lateral inversion. So there are totally five qualities of image formed by the plane mirror. So it is an erect image. It is of the same size as that of the object. The same distance from the mirror and virtual image and finally laterally inverted. This slide also gives the same information as we discussed in the previous. The properties of the image formed in a plane mirror are as follows. The image is virtual, the image is rect, the image is of the same size as the object, the image is laterally inverted, the image is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front. The image is situated on the line passing through the object and perpendicular to the plane mirror. So these are the very important qualities of the image and it is a very important question as far as your exams are concerned. Children, what you find in this slide is the diagrammatic representation of the image formed by a plane mirror. So here, O is the object and I is the image. PQ is a plane mirror. So the plane mirror is shaded. That means the shaded part that is down of PQ is the non-reflecting surface and above the line PQ it is a reflecting surface. So the object is facing the reflected surface and the image is facing the non-reflected surface. This diagram is a very important diagram. You must practice this. Now, after first, um, I will tell you the easiest way of drawing this picture. Now, first draw the mirror PQ, then fix a point O, that is the object, at a distance of, say, 
3 cm or 4 cm above the line PQ. At the same distance, you fix I down. So fix the object and the image in your diagram first. Then fix a point A and C. So join all the rays as shown in the diagram. You will get exactly. So if you draw in this way, it will be easier for you. So actual representation is from the object, two incident rays are coming and falling on the mirror and getting reflected. So AB is one reflected ray, CD is another reflected ray. So the perpendicular above A and above C, they are called as normal. Now we have to extend the ray with that dotted line and that should meet at the point I. So this is the logical behind this diagram and you have to draw it as I have told you in an easier way. You will get it very easily. So draw the diagram, practice this diagram well. Yes, children, by this we come to the end of today's learning section. So we have discussed about properties of light. What is reflection? What is the difference between regular and diffuse reflection? And what are the qualities of image formed by a plane mirror? And the diagrammatic representation of the image formed in a plane mirror. So all these are all very important. So just learn them as many times as you want till you get understand and I will give you the homework list separately. So we come to the end of today's learning children. Bye from you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.